Okay, so this is what we'd like to do. Uh, okay, uh, we'd like to read 10 numbers and make sure that the numbers are between 10 and 100. So that's another thing that we need to do. And then, as each number is read, well, maybe this thing, we'd like to, when we read, after reading the numbers, we just would like to display them without duplications. If that was not entered before, we don't want to display it again. So if it was displayed before, we don't want to display it again. This is something that I'm just coming up now because now as I read this, this is actually what I told you, but as I, I'm reading here, it says that we need to display as I read. So you read one, you display it again. And you read another one, you display it if it was not entered before, something like that. So, but now let's just leave this part out and we're going to be doing what we know how to do things. Let's just read 10 numbers. That's it. And put them in an array. Do we need to put them in an array? Well, if I just would like to read 10 numbers, I don't really need to put them in an array. But what comes next is what will force me to use an array because I'd like to remember those numbers to see if they were printed so I don't print them again. So that's why I need the array. I don't, if I just read here from, from here, I don't need to, this, to have an array. But this is going to be needed because I would like to memorize each number that the user entered. And it's better to have an array rather than having different variables. Especially with 10 variables, I can, it's not like convenient to have n1, n2, up to n10. I could, but that's not convenient because that, that defines, I mean, that's not uh, the purpose of this exercise. The exercise is to practice arrays. So th this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be reading 10 numbers and making sure that each one of those numbers is between 10 and 100. And then we display the array, just to make sure that we read those numbers and we the, 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 the array contains the numbers that were entered. So let's do that. So of course I will have to declare a scanner object. So this is my scanner, let's call it key B to be again uh, consistent with what we used to do, uh, system.in. Uh, notice again that uh, that means added the import, right? Because of the control space, if you use the control space to type the scanner, you're going to get the import as well. But if you don't, you just type it yourself without using control space, then you have to type this yourself or maybe use the help of NetBeans because NetBeans will also help you if you just don't have it you can just click here and you have some options if you don't know what you're doing just don't click on randomly and because if you can you might be creating something like this and then you might think oh fine this is going to help me but it's not so don't click on things that you don't understand what you'd like to do is to do this basically so just do what you want to do don't do something more because if you don't know what you do and you click on something, you might think it will work, but it won't. So now I have this thing. I need to declare an array. So of what's the data type of those numbers? Do we have a data type? Not really. I'll go with the simple one. I'm going to make them an int. Int and then my array. Or I can call them numbers. New int and I know I want just 10 numbers so I'll fix it at 10. Now what I'd like to do I'd like to read those 10 numbers so I need a for loop that goes up to numbers no that's not what I want numbers dot length so this is going to make a loop repeat the exact amount of time that I need that I want so and then I'm going to display Please enter number, and then let me put, for example, i plus 1. Why the plus 1? Because I don't want to start with 0. Because i starts with 0, right? So I don't want to display, please enter number 0. So this is going to be 0 plus 1, so it will become 1. Yes? Well, I could do something that, uh, now that you talk about it, yeah, I could do something just to practice something that you spoke about earlier, that in a, in a for loop I can initialize more than one variable, right? Well, this is not really the best way because I'm wasting some memory, but just for the sake of 
understanding what well, I can do something like this. So I'm declaring two variables, one i that starts from 0, the other one k that starts from 1. And then I'm going to increment i and increment k. And instead of just displaying i, I can just display k. How about that? And that k doesn't come, doesn't, is not included in the condition because I don't need to include it in the condition. It just will follow whatever things is i is doing. So yeah, that's the way to, to do that. So this is some kind of a counter that starts, that starts from 1. Okay, so now I'm going to just put something like this, next int. And I have a loop that repeats 10 times and it will just read 10 numbers. Do I need to, I'm, am I checking if the numbers are really between 10 and 100? No, I'm not. But I'm just putting a loop. Now let's just uh, display just to see that what I entered. So this is not really part of uh, what I'm, uh, the question, but I just, I'm just doing something intermediary until I'm going to reach the full answer. So in order for me to display the array, I'm just going to, uh, same thing, numbers.length, and I'm just going to display the array one item at a time, uh, numbers, i, and then just put a space, and at the end just display to go back to the line, so it will just go back to the line. Now if I run this thing, it will just ask me, please enter number one, and then this is number one, this is number two, this is number three, whatever. So it just keeps going to reading the numbers, and then I have all the numbers entered and displayed in one place. So it looks that it's doing fine. Now the next step, what am I doing? What should I do? I have an if statement for what? Check in between 10 and 100, okay. So I can do some kind of, uh, once I get the number, I would like to check if that number is, if it's between 10 and 100. So now if it's between 10 and that number's uh, is, less than 100. I mean between 10, which means this should be included, right? So I'll put these. And you know, I don't want to name it num numbers, it might be a little bit uh, confusing. Number i, I think it's better. Notice that I use control r, and then you can rename to do whatever you want. So I can just name array or values or, or just number. Yes. That's what I was trying, control r. You press Control R and then you're going to be able once you. But first of all, you need to click on the variable. You have to have the blinking carrot just blinking on the name. Then Control R is going to allow you to name your variable whatever you want, everywhere. So now you said an if. Okay, if this is true, what should I do? Sorry, false. Another F for what? I'm sorry? Well, you're trying to do two things at the same time, and that's not advisable. You're trying to, first of all, make sure that the number is between 10 and 100, and you're not sure that this is okay, because is this enough? That's not enough to check if a number is between 10 and 100, because what if the number is between 10 and 100? What are you doing? You're not doing anything. And now you would like to do something else to check that if it's repeating, that's two things in one time, uh, that's not advisable. So let's do one thing at a time. Now we don't want to talk about repetitions, we're just talking about making sure that our numbers are between 10 and 100. So what shall we do? Put this inside the F. Okay, uh, that's a little bit weird because the first time number doesn't contain any value that I put myself in. So now what is inside of number i when it's the first time that I'm getting in? I haven't put anything inside the number and I'm checking what's inside of it if it's greater than 10? That's not a good idea. It's when you do something, some verification with this greater than that or whatever, 
make sure that you put a value inside that thing that you're trying to check. But now we did not. Yes. Change the greater than to less than the number less than ten and greater than and right wrong. Okay, then then you see now we're going somewhere because we would like to capture when we are not given a number between 10 and 100 because when the number is between 10 and 100 we don't have to do anything that's what we want that's okay but we would like to be able to do something when it's not the case which means if the number is less than 10 or if the number is greater than 100 then I have a problem I need to display if okay, fine uh, there's a problem and the numbers uh, error for example something like this the numbers the number is not between 10 and 100 and I'm just real I just uh, I just realized that I never told him that I would like to have numbers between 10 and 100 now I can I should just mention it somewhere between 10 and 100 now maybe I'm informing the user that I would like to have a number between 10 and 100 and if the user gives me a wrong number well this is not between 10 and 100 so it tells me error but the problem now is just it moves to the number 2 I don't want to move to number 2 after the message I put I minus minus yep. okay uh, why do I am I doing this So, okay, so now if I do this, what is going to happen is that, for example, i is going to be 0 the first time, so I'm going to put something in number 0, and then if that number 0 is less than 10 or greater than 100, I'm going to display error, and i becomes minus 1. And then when I increase here, this is going to make it become 0 again, and then it's going to go back to what I'm doing. But that's, that's a good solution. But now my problem is that this k, now k becomes a problem, so I'm going to remove that thing because this I need to do both k and i at the same time, which is not convenient. So I'd rather have just one variable and that will do the work, right? So now if I do something like this, if the number that is that was given is not respecting the condition, I'm just going to mess with the this for loop and this for loop is becoming not a, no, a for loop that I know exactly how many times it's going to repeat so that's why then you can see that this the for loop is generally used when we know exactly how many times we are repeating but now we're making it in a way that we're tampering with the number of iterations of this loop because it might repeat more than 10 times based on what well based on what the user gives us so let me just stop this and run it again but this time if I type a number that is greater than 100, it stays at number 1. And then if it's okay, then it moves on. If a number is too big again, it just stays at number 2 until I just put a number that is not uh, making that condition to be true. So now, as soon as long as I'm putting some correct numbers, now that's what I have. What do you mean once? Oh yes, one. you mean this one? one. Yes, yeah, because it's less than ten. Uh, no, we're not saying less than zero. We just want from ten and between ten and one hundred, which means nine, eight, whatever. They are not going to be acceptable. So we're done, almost, because now we we have prepared in this part, in this first part. Uh, the different kind of loops that will accept 10 numbers and we are making sure that those numbers are between 10 and 100 now the the second th the second thing what if for example here I just would like to display the numbers only if they're not repeating for example you can see that this 45 is repeated three times as you can see here and uh, 54 as well so what I'd like to do actually just I'd like to display 54 21 okay 54 display so I don't display it again 56 85 45 
85 was displayed again, so I'm not going to display it. 95 and then 45, same thing, it was displayed. So I'm, I'm only going to display these numbers. I don't know if I can, okay. This 54, 21, 56, 85, 45, and 95. Sorry? Dot colon? No, there's no dot colon. So now, before, I'm, I don't want to always display. I would like to put a condition to display only if the number was not displayed before. So how can I know if a number was not displayed before? So what should I do? The first time I'm always going to display, right? Because the, the, when number is zero, I'm going to display it anyways, because it was not displayed before. Now, when i is equal to 1, I need to check, before I display this number here, I need to check if it wasn't displayed before. Which is 0. But if it was not displayed before, now I'm going to display it, which means I'm going to check the one before me, before this number. Now, when, I, when I'm going back to here, this one, am I going to display this one or not? I need to check if it was the first one or maybe the, la the, I mean, or the second one. And if it's this one, I need to check all of these that were before, if they were, if they are equal to that same number. So that's what I'm, I will have to do. So how to do that? Well, basically, let it, let me do it manually first, so I can see if I can just generalize that in a way that I, I can. So what is what I mean with manually? Now, let's just forget about this loop. Okay, I will just going to remove this for now. I will just display them manually, which means I'm going to display the first one and then I'm going to put the conditions to make sure that I'm displaying only the ones that are respecting the condition. We said that the first time I'm going to always display this one, right? So this is going to be displayed. So number of zero. I'm already displaying it. Now what about number one? Am I always displaying number one? So this is, let's say, position index zero. Now with the index one, I'm not going to do the same thing by doing this. But this is going to be, sorry, by doing this. Because I need to check that if this one is not equal to that one. So uh, what I should ask is if number of one is different from number of zero then I display number one what do you think does it make sense okay what about what should I do now with index two I need to do basically the same thing before I can display to. Of course, this is some kind of a loop, but I need to understand what kind of loop is that. I need to make sure that, first of all, this uh, number two, it's different from, or maybe let, let's just do it differently. This number two is different from number one, and. this number two should be also different from zero right i'm saying right but i'm not don't get any answer you you don't seem to i mean is this up to here this is really you can see what i'm where i'm going but i just would like to make sure that you get something that okay now let, let me let me believe that you are following me what should I do here? So this becomes three. Two, and then three. One, and then I need another one. With zero. And that's it? Almost, we just need two. Two, three. If the number three is different from the number two, and the number three is different from number one, and it's different from the number zero, then I display it. 
Well, I know that it takes time, but I just would like to understand that. Look at what I'm, what I, what I, what is happening here. If you give me a number that I'm displaying, before deciding that that number exists, I need to make sure that that number is different from the index before it, and the one before before it, and the one before before it, up to zero. Can I put this in a loop? Okay, let's let's put this in a loop. Oh, now I'm not going to. Well, so now the thing is, I just would like to display this thing. Okay, so I would like to display the number three. So I should repeat how many times? How many questions should I ask? One, two, one, two three. and three. So, okay. So I should repeat from zero to less than three. Well, because one, two, and three. So I, I should ask three questions. Well, I don't want to go into the nested loop because I don't want to complicate things. Uh, my, my thing now is that if I do something here inside, this is going to repeat three times. I'm going to display three times this number three. I don't want to display it three times. I would like to, before doing something, I'd like to do some verification. And if some kind of Boolean expression is true, then I'm going to display it. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to declare some kind of a variable to see if this is, uh, let's say, is equal. So I'm going to say it's false. And if the number of 3 is equal or to one of the number I don't, I don't like, I, it's not a good idea to name that array number because the control space doesn't help me much. Then I'm going to say is equal, is equal to true. And if it's equal to true, I just don't need to keep checking and I can just stop. And now if it's equal, I'm going to not display, but if it's not equal, then I'm going to display. And this is going to do the same thing that this is doing. Do you agree with me? Look what this thing is doing. This thing is is going to become false. This is false, right? If this is false, I'm going to display. So I'm assuming that I'm going to display. But this is false, and I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to compare. Is number 3 equal to number i? i is going to be 0, 1, and two, and that's it. If you if you focus on i, what are the values of i based on this setup? Zero, one, two, and three. No, three is not included because I'm saying less than three. So we have zero, one, and two. And pay attention, what's happening here? That's zero. That's one. That's two. So we're comparing, let me just put this maybe each one on, on the line so you can see them. Uh, this is each one on the line with a lot of complications. But let's just put these like this. OK, so what do we have here? We compare number 3 with 2, 1, and 0. And this is what is happening here. We compare number 3. Actually, the way I'm comparing it is quite a bit different because I'm doing equals here and it's different here. That's why maybe you get confused. So what, what should it take, for example, if I just say if it's different? Continue? If I make it, well, this is, uh, you, you'd like to continue when? To go for the next one? It's going to go anyways. Skip what? But continue means it's going to skip whatever it's below it. So what's below that continue? There's nothing. 
So that's the continue is not a good idea here. So let's just do something. What this code is doing, it's just trying to say that is number three equal to number zero or number one or number two. If it's if one of them is true, what is going to happen? If if for example the third number is equal to like this is this is zero, one, two, three. If this is one equal to this one, what should happen? It's going to set this to be true, and then it's going to break, which means get out of the for loop. And then, because that's true, this is not going to be equal to false, and then I'm not going to display this number 3. When am I going to display this number 3, like here, for example, in this situation? Is number 3, I'm going to ask, is number 3 equal to number 0? No. Is number 3 equal to number 1? No. Is number 3 equal to number 2? No. So there's no more thing to compare. What's inside of equal? Is it false? Yes. So I'm going to display number 3. So this is going to stay false unless the number is equal to one of the previous numbers. Then I'm not going to be displayed. It. And this thing works with number three. Are you still with me or? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you said yeah, so I'm going to jump on that and okay, what should I do to make it work with two? So notice here, I need to print two, so I'm going to print two. I want to compare between two and one and two and zero, I'm going to compare between 2 and i and etc. And it should be less than 2. And you can see that this is something that is going to work regardless of, uh, of course, there's this uh, problem because I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see the loop. I just would like you to, to see it. But let me just remove the mistake so you can see this thing. I'm just uh, not declaring this again. I'm only declaring it once. Okay, the first time we said we always display, but the next times we just need to check. For example, here I'm just going to make this, whatever it was, 3, it will become 1. So you realize that I need to repeat this for index 1, 2, 3, until? Until 9. So here's my loop. So I'm going to repeat this from i until the index is 9, but I'm not going to start with 0 because I know that 0 is going to be, I'm displaying 0 anyways. So I'm always displaying this one. But the other ones, I need to do some kind of something like this. Now, my problem is I cannot put this in a loop because I already have this i that I'm using inside. So this is going to be, let's call this j. I, oh, basically, I should have used this control, control R, and then name it J, and then. So this is going to repeat many times, and because I have I here, I don't want to mess up with that I. But you see here, this is not going to be one; it's going to be J, because J is going to be one, and then two, and then three, up to nine. That's what we said, and this, what I'm doing here. I'm repeating it nine times because I'm not displaying the tenth one is here. So what this is the result of that is that I'm going to only display the numbers if they're not repeating. But do you see it? I'm not sure. To see it, just let's put a value. When j is equal to one, this is going to be one. And this is going to be one, and this is one. I put false into equals and I'm comparing. Is number one is equal to number i? What is i? i is going to be zero. So I'm just comparing one with zero, the one before. If it's equal, fine, I'm just going to make it through and then I break and get out. And I'm not going to be displaying this and now j becomes two. Now when j becomes two, this is going to be two and this is going to be two. And this is two. And then I'm asking, okay, is two is equal to 1, uh, uh, sorry, because we start from 0, so is it 2 is equal to 0, or 2 is equal to 1, and if it's the case, one of them is going to be true, I'm going to break, and if 
this is true I'm not going to get inside and display so the idea is I'm repeating with this J and I'm only displaying if this equals is false oh, sorry this is why this nested loop is going to do what I need to do so let's run this and see I'm going to put some numbers that are repeating so I can see them not being displayed and now look how many numbers am I displaying I'm just displaying this 10 11 of, of 12 so I don't want to see all of them but I'm going to see only 10 11 and 12 so all the others that were repeated were not displayed and to have this build successful on the new line I can just can do this and that's So this thing just reads the numbers and make sure that they're between 10 and 10 and uh, 100. Read 10 numbers between 10 and 100. And this thing is displaying the first number and the rest is just checking. Do I need to... Is there a way to avoid here? Can I just start from zero, for example? If I start from zero, what would happen? I'm going to compare. Is zero less than zero? So it's going to be... False. This is false. I'm not going to get inside. Uh, is this false? Yeah. So, you know what? I can just even remove this and it will still work. But I need to start from zero. That's a little bit. Why? But let's just try it. If if j is zero, is this condition true? Because now i is zero and then j is zero. This is zero is less than zero. No. So I'm not going to get inside. What's inside of equal? Is it false? Yes. So display number zero. So I'm going to display the first number all the time with this setting. Let's just run it so we can see it 10 10 10 11 11 11 10 10 12 12 and this is what i'm seeing even the first one that was repeated was not reading nice right speechless i know so amazed that you don't have a lot of things to say so, but the main thing you understood how I came up with that answer because I, I was trying to find I, if you pay attention, this is the code to how to find a number that we just discussed a couple of slides uh, before, a couple of minutes before. If you remember, if you'd like to look if a number exists, this is the kind of code that we were doing. You just have a Boolean value, uh, Boolean, Boolean uh, variable, and then you keep looking. If you find the number, then you say, okay, I found it, and then it's true. Basically, you can just replace this with found so if you found the number before then this is going to be okay if something that you if you found it then you make it found true and then you break if you did not find it that means you can display it yes well the continue is not a good idea because continue generally you don't you want to skip something below continue so what's below continue there's nothing below continue so if you use continue it's going to just keep going, just going to repeat. So, yes, yes, you could you could have uh, another way, which means, uh, for example, w in, in other I in if you don't want to tamper with this minus minus, what you could do, you have a do while. And then you keep repeating, but then you count that you'd like to stop after 10 times. Once you got 10 numbers, you just stop. So you have uh, some kind of a counter like this that counts up to 10, but then you have some kind of uh, ways. Okay, let's you know what, let's just do this. Let's just put this on some kind of comment. And let's just do another way how to read 10 numbers and make sure that they are between 10 and 100. So 
what I'm going to need, I need, I will need a counter, something that counts. Uh, let me call it this way. I'm going to need the index, okay? Index. I'm going to start from zero, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some kind of do while, while what? While uh, the index is uh, less than ten. If the index is less than ten, what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this kind of things. Okay, this, this is not i, this is index now. But the problem is that, now, yeah, this is index. Now this thing here is going to repeat and then the index is not incremented. So I need to put a condition to know when this index is going to be incremented. So the index is going to be incremented only if the number is respecting the condition. So if, for example, the number, uh, yes, number of index this is index is like my i there actually if if the number is greater or equal to 10 and the number of index is less than or equal to 100 then the index is going to be incremented so which means now index starts at 0 I'm going to display, please, enter the first number. And I'm going to put the value in the position 0. And then I'm checking, is, the, is this number that was just entered, given by the user, is it greater than, one, than 10 and less than 100? If it's yes, that means increment the index and then go get the second number. But what if the user gives me the wrong number, like something minus 10, for example? This is 0, and then this becomes false. So index stays at 0, and then is 0 less than 10? Yes, OK, go back, and then this is another way. When you're going to see that this is, maybe you might like this one. If I would like it to make it exactly like this, I'll just maybe just change this index to i. It will be quite similar to this one up there. But notice now the question becomes different here. I'm asking if it's less or greater, so I can make him repeat. But this repeats, and I'm just advanced, advanced to the next number if it re respects the condition. So the approach is different, but the result is the same. Yes. Yeah, it says uh, now I have problem with this i because I just declared it before. If what? This one, this uh, line 44, yes? Yes. Now, this doesn't mm, enter any j or any i. What's inside of, because j is 0, 1, up to 9. And i is the same thing, 0 up to basically 8. 0 is the index. Uh, sorry, i and j are the indexes uh, and the indices. So the indices of the array are not the values, because, like for example, I type 10, 11, and 12. The 12 is not i or j. 12 is number of something. You know what? Let me just maybe display something different. How about this? Please enter. Let me do something like this. And this will be maybe interesting because I'm going just to fool you a little bit into thinking I'm doing something amazing, but it's not, actually. Look at this thing. Let's just make it. Now, if I run this thing, you see, if I type a number, now well, this number is, so I'm just uh, trying to put some same similar numbers, you see? What, what is changing here is, when, I, when I'm comparing the i and j, those i and j's are the numbers here, which, as you can see, they are only between 0 and 9. So these numbers there are the result of number of j and number of i. So this thing I'm comparing, like, uh, for example, if I look at this thing here, the first time j is equal to 0. So 
I put this false and then I ask is put zero in i and then is zero less than zero this is going to be false which means I'm not going to get inside this four found is it false yes it's false and then I'm going to display number of zero which is 15 so this is what I'm displaying here now I go up j becomes 1 is 1 less than 10 yes I get inside and then now I put 0 in i and then I compare is 0 less than 1 yes I compare now number of 0 sorry number of 1 because j is 1 number of 1 with is it equal to number of 0 is this equal to this so now I'm comparing the numbers themselves and then if they're equal well, sorry, um, I said this. Well, th that was yes. This is number one. Is it equal to number zero? No, they're not. So this is false. I'm not getting inside. I go up. J become uh, I becomes one. Is one less than one? No. I get out. Maybe let me just do something with with you. Let me just run this here with the breakpoint with the debugging. So I can make it a breakpoint here to make it stop when it reaches this this thing. Uh, for the variables, we're not there yet. But let me just put some numbers here and then we can maybe look at these uh, from op okay so wh what happened okay uh, uh, yeah because number nine that's the, the that's where I am now you can see this is the output this is these are the variables and this is my array and you can see that each thing has them in the value these are the values that I have in my array so uh, these are the indices of my array but what I'm interested in is the i and j so let's just focus on those now let me just put them close to let me put this here can I maybe put this here yeah so you can see the value next to the variable can I just make this closer yes so now you can see i and very soon you're going to see j because now I'm going to run this code and now you have j and I would like to see i and j so i is 10 because well basically I came up of this loop and out of this loop i was 10 because I needed to stop repeating so that's why i is 10 but then i is going to change here because that's what I'm going to do so now found is going to be declared and here it is now found now is also there and it's false as you can see I don't know it doesn't seem but I can see it from here now the thing is I'm going to do loop the first time I is well it says this but it's going to be zero is zero less than than zero no so if you see this is not going to be getting inside the four this is false is this true yes found is equal to false yes it is and it's going to just display and you're going to see now this is going to display number of j which is number of zero which is which number is it? This 12. And you can see that 12 is this has been displayed. Now let's keep going. Exactly, to be able to compare between two numbers. So I need to have two indices. minus one for example well no y you have to do some kind of thing because the first time you're comparing this one with this one but so you compare you, ha you have only two comparisons but the second time you're going to compare this one with two numbers and the third time you're going to compare this number with three numbers and so on so that's that's the idea because this is going to be increasing for example here I'm going to compare with all the numbers before it so I could have done something differently but uh, I mean this is one one way to to have a look at it but the idea is that once you have this you can just keep looking at this i and j now i you see i is zero and j is one and i'm going to get inside is number of j is equal to number of i what is number of j just you can select this and then it will tell you what's number of j this is 32 because j is one and what is number of i just select it and then put your mouse over it and then it's going to give you the value inside of number of i i is equal to zero so that's why you have this 12 
And this way you can just follow your variables and see how they're how they are behaving. Now let's see for example this one 21 also 21 is the same thing so it's not going to be it's going to be displayed but uh, this 32 now the, the j is going to be 3. You see now j is 3. I'm going to not see this 32 displayed again because it was already displayed. So let's see how, how it is going to detect that. Now boolean is going to become false and then I'm going to start with i back to 0 and then is 0 less than 3. So it's going to get inside. So is number of j, this is number of 0, number of 3, that's 32. This is number 3, that's 32. Is it great? Is it equal to number of i? i is equal to 0, remember? So is it equal to 12? N no, it's not, so I'm not going to get inside. But something is going to happen now because i becomes 1. And then I'm going to compare this with this, which they are equal. Now when i becomes 1, I'm comparing, is 1 less than 3? Yes. Now is number of 3 is equal to number of 1? Yes, they are. Now get inside, and I'm going to put found as true. The break is going to take me out of the loop, and I'm asking, what's inside of found? Is it false? No. So I'm not going to display this one, and I'm going to skip. Now j becomes uh, 4. And then I get inside again. So this is how it works. Yes. Well, this is just for efficiency. Because let's say, for example, this last one here. If I don't have the break, uh, what was ha is going to happen is that I'm going to compare 12 with 12. And if it's found, if it's found, I'm going to make this to be true. And then I go and keep going because there's no break and just keep going. Okay, compare now this 12 with 32. And then compare this 12 with 21. And it's going to compare this 12 with all the numbers, even though I found it that it was in the first one. The break, what it's going to do is that I compare this 12 with this number. If it's equal, okay, I'm stop comparing. That's it. Just make this to be found and then let's get out. So I don't need to compare. But if let's say if I remove this thing, am I going to be seeing some duplication? No. This is just something that I'm going just to make the computer lose waste some time for nothing. But the logic behind that is that if I find what I'm looking for, stop looking with this break. The break does, okay, stop, don't keep looking. I found that the one number was previously in, uh, available there. So I don't need to keep looking again. So that's the, the break what it does. But if you remove it, it's just it, can, it will work. You can try it if you want. Yes. Yes, exactly. So the for when the J increases, the I is going to start from zero up to J minus one. Exactly. Up to J minus one. Because when we compare, for example, here we just compare up to like for example, we need to compare up to 7. Yeah. We compare 8 with 7, with 6. We don't need to compare 8 with itself. Yeah. Yes. So that was a nice uh, video. A very long one. <laughs>